The DFT is a mathematical process which analyzes a time domain signal in order to extract that signal's frequency content or frequency domain information. It basically operates by comparing or correlating the signal being analyzed against what are known as sinusoidal basis functions or sinusoidal basis waveforms. The comparison is achieved using a mathematical technique or process called correlation and correlation can be thought of as being a measure of similarity between signals or as a measure of how strongly present one signal is in another signal. In this example we have a time domain signal x of n being compared against a DFT analysis basis function which is a cosine waveform which has exactly one cycle over n samples where n represents the number of samples in the signal being analyzed. In this case the output of the correlation is producing a numerical value of 1.6. Now the magnitude of this correlation measurement gives an indication of how strongly present the analysis basis function is in the time domain signal being analyzed. So the greater the magnitude of the correlation measurement the more strongly present the analysis basis function is in the time domain signal being analyzed. The analysis basis functions used in the comparison are all the same length as the signal x of n. They are also all limited to having an integer number of cycles over the duration of the signal being analyzed. The sinusoidal basis functions are both cosine waveforms and sine waveforms. Now the result of the comparison of the signal being analyzed with the sine wave basis function is stored as a complex number in the correlation measurement. Now the overall correlation result for both the cosine waveform and the sine waveform is then stored as a complex value in DFT bin 1. And it is the magnitude of this complex number or the correlation result that is used to produce the magnitude spectrum. This comparison continues on for sinusoidal basis functions of different frequencies. So if x of n will be compared against basis functions which have two cycles over n samples, three cycles over n samples, and so on. Now the result of a comparison with a cosine basis function will always be stored as a real value in the correlation measurement, while a comparison with the sine wave basis function is always stored as an imaginary value and it's the overall complex result that is stored as a DFT bin where the bin number corresponds to the number of cycles associated with the basis function. The overall process continues then for n bins in total where n is the length of the signal x. So far we haven't considered a case of bin 0 because it's handled in a slightly different way. For this case the signal being analyzed is compared against a sinusoidal basis function which is zero frequency or in other words a basis function that doesn't oscillate. The signal that's used in the comparison is just a sequence of ones. For this case the correlation measure is dependent upon the average amplitude of the signal being analyzed. If the average amplitude of the signal being analyzed is zero then the correlation measure will be zero. If the average amplitude of the signal being analyzed deviates from zero, then the correlation measure will increase accordingly.